Despite the cold of the Ice Age and the frequent lack of food and the danger from wild animals, the Neanderthal folk were quite a merry lot. And one of the most fun-loving Neanderthal persons was Little Nose. There was one day in the year which the Neanderthal people kept especially for playing tricks on each other. They called it Crocus Day. As soon as the first crocus appeared in bloom in the spring, then for that day anyone could play tricks on anyone else. The person playing the trick shouting crocus at the person tricked. As you might expect, it was one of Little Nose's favourite times of the year. One spring day, Little Nose sat under his favourite tree where he did his more important thinking. Two eyes were with him, half asleep in the first warm weather since the previous autumn. I don't know what I'm going to do, Two Eyes, said Little Nose. Any day now the first crocus will be out, and I haven't thought of a single trick to play. I could tie a rope across the cave entrance to trip up father, but I did that last year. Or I could tie a long string to the tiger skin rug and pull it so that mother would think it was alive. But I did that the year before. After lunch, he still hadn't thought of a good crocus joke, and he decided to go for a walk with two eyes, when hopefully an idea might just come to him. They were some distance from home when two eyes suddenly stopped. What is it, two eyes, said Little Nose. Have you found something? Two eyes made not a sound, but stood stock still, his big ears spread to catch the faintest sound, and his trunk held out, sniffing delicately at the breeze. Little Nose followed Two Eyes' gaze. He thought he could just make out something lurking in the bushes, and things which lurked in bushes were invariably dangerous. A large object was sticking out from among the leaves. It was a horn, not an ordinary horn. It was huge, half as big as Little Nose. It could only be one thing. That can only be one thing, Two Eyes, Little Nose said in a whisper. A giant wild bull. But Two Eyes was a mammoth, and mammoths had much keener eyesight than the Andertal boys. He decided to have a closer look. No, don't, Two Eyes, said Little Nose, as the little mammoth walked boldly up to the bush, reached up with his trunk, and touched the horn. The horn dropped to the ground with a soft thump, and one thing was certain. There was no wild giant bull on the other end. Little Nose ran to join Two Eyes. He examined the horn. It was old and discoloured, and the sharp tip had been broken off. But it seemed worth keeping. It might be useful for storing things in. Little Nose lifted the horn up and looked inside. It was full of dirt and dust, and he tried to blow it out, getting his hair and eyes full of dust in the process as it blew back in his face. So he turned it round, put the broken tip to his mouth, and blew again. There was another great cloud of dust. Then a loud bellowing sound. Little Nose dropped the horn as if it were red hot and jumped back, falling over a tuft of grass and sitting down with a thump. Two Eyes was nowhere to be seen. Little Nose cautiously reached out to the horn and picked it up. Two Eyes equally cautiously re-emerged from a distant clump of bushes. He looked suspiciously at the horn in Little Nose's hands. Little Nose took a deep breath and blew hard into the horn. <coughs> This time the noise echoed across the landscape, and Little Nose now knew exactly why Two Eyes had been frightened. The sound from the horn was exactly like the bellow of an enraged woolly rhinoceros. He gave it a more gentle blow. And it sounded like a slightly annoyed woolly rhinoceros. Little Nose heaved the horn across Two Eyes' back, where it balanced precariously, and they set off back home. They were not far from the caves when they saw a pair of figures ahead of them. It was Nosy and one of the other men returning empty-handed from a day's hunting. And Little Nose had a brilliant idea. Did the horn really make a sound like an enraged woolly rhinoceros? Maybe he and Two Eyes had imagined it. They found a patch of long grass and hid. Then Little Nose lifted the horn and blew. <coughs> it was wonderful. The two men dropped their spears and ran. It's a woolly rhinoceros, they heard Nosey yell. Enraged, run for your life. And Little Nose lay in the grass and laughed and laughed until he was sore. Two eyes gave a sort of non-committal mammoth grunt. Actually, mammoths didn't have much of a sense of humour, and he thought the whole thing a bit ridiculous. But Little Nose was still amused. This is going to be fun. This is going to lead to trouble, thought Two eyes, as usual. That evening, Uncle Redhead, who was passing through the district, 
dropped in for a visit. At supper, he said, spring's coming on fast. Any time now, it'll be Crocus Day. Crocus Day. Little Nose had completely forgotten. Uncle Redhead was in a reminiscent mood and recounted with much laughter tales of Crocus Day tricks he had played when he was Little Nose's age. He had been the best joker in the district, throwing chestnuts into the fire so that they popped and sparked, startling everyone, or spreading bear grease on the stone floor at the entrance to the cave to make people slip and fall. Hm, said Mother. It wasn't all that funny. I was the one who slipped and fell. She was, of course, Uncle Redhead's sister. But Little Nose thought it sounded hilarious. The snag was that it wasn't likely to come as a surprise to anyone after Uncle Redhead had been talking about it. He was really no nearer to thinking of a trick to play. That is, until breakfast time the following morning. Neanderthal caves had no proper furniture, but handy rocks served just as well. Instead of a table, Little Nose ate his meals off a large flat rock, and smaller, rounder boulders acted as seats. Little Nose was hungry, as usual, and he fidgeted as he waited impatiently for Mother to serve the food. And as he fidgeted, he was sure he felt his seat move. He wriggled, and sure enough, the boulder rocked very slightly in the sandy floor of the cave. He was just going to tell Mother when he had an idea. This might be the beginnings of a good joke, a crocus day trick that would be remembered for years, like Uncle Redhead's slippery floor. Late that afternoon, Little Nose was playing in the woods with two eyes when he saw something which made his heart leap. Among the long grass growing in a small clearing, he saw the dark spikes of crocus leaves. And among the crocus leaves were stalks with buds, and some of the buds were showing tips of color. By tomorrow, they would be crocus flowers in full bloom. Tomorrow would be crocus day. Little Nose waited impatiently for the day to pass. Supper came and went, then bedtime. Little Nose lay under the fur bed covers in his own special corner of the cave and worried in case he fell asleep. The whole thing depended on his staying awake until mother and father were asleep. He had work to do. At long last, apart from the occasional snore, Silence fell on the caves of the Neanderthal folk. Little Nose slipped out of bed and tiptoed across the cave. The fire cast a warm glow of light, and a faint moonlight shone through the entrance. Little Nose collected a handful of kindling and a flat piece of bone, which he had hidden ready, and set to work. The sky outside was beginning to lighten with the coming day when he finished. He had hardly closed his eyes, it seemed, when Mother was telling him that it was time to get up and fetch the water and the firewood. Rubbing his eyes, Little Nose got on with his morning chores, and it wasn't until he got back to the cave that he realised that Father wasn't there. Where's Father? he asked. Have you forgotten? said Mother. Father has gone fishing with some friends. He left early. He won't be back until after breakfast. Breakfast isn't quite ready, so take your bedding out and give it a good shaking. Bewildered, Little Nose dragged his fur bedclothes out into the fresh air. His plan was going all wrong. It depended on Father being at home for breakfast. He started shaking the dust and fluff out of the bedding. Suddenly he gave a yell. I've got something in my eye! And he rushed into the cave to see Mother. What's all the fuss? Sit down here, where there's light to see. And she pushed him down on the rock where Father normally sat to eat. Now, let me see, Mother started to say. Good gracious! She looked amazed. The rock seat had sunk out of sight into the sandy floor of the cave, into the hole that had taken Little Nose half the night to dig when the pieces of stick holding it into position had broken under his weight. But it should have been Father when he sat down to breakfast. Then Little Nose would have jumped up and down shouting, Crocus! Mother said, You're not hurt, are you? Father had better have a look at it when he comes home. And Little Nose could have wept. What a start to Crocus Day! He was sitting with two eyes under his favourite tree when he heard a shout. People were hurrying from their caves towards the river. From what they said, Little Nose gathered that Father and his friends had had extraordinary luck with their fishing, and the whole tribe was required to help carry home the catch. He might as well go along too. Everyone was milling about among the high rocks along the river bank, their excited voices echoing loudly. Little Nose watched for a moment, then a broad grin broke out on his face. He would play the biggest Crocus Day joke of all time, involving a whole tribe. 
He raced to where the wild bullhorn was hidden and dragged it back towards the river and a handy patch of tall rushes. Then, puffing his cheeks out, he blew until he thought he would burst. The bellowing sound blared out, echoing and re-echoing among the rocks. The people stopped in their tracks. A woolly rhinoceros, cried one. Enraged, cried another. And they ran and scrambled in all directions as the sound seemed to echo from everywhere at once. It's coming out of the forest, across the river, over the hill. And Little Nose lay in among the rushes and decided he'd give them just one more for luck. <coughs> it's getting closer, shouted someone, back to the caves. And next moment it was a stampede. This is where I shout crocus, thought Little Nose. But before he could say anything, the whole tribe raced for home, trampling through the rushes and everything else in their path, including Little Nose, who found himself flat on the ground under several dozen pairs of hard Neanderthal feet. As the sound of the retreat faded in the distance, Little Nose tried to get up, spitting out mud and pieces of rush. Crocus, everybody. Two eyes appeared, wearing a very, I told you so, look. Little Nose looked around for the horn. It was in a million pieces. Come to think of it, Two Eyes, Crocus Day is a pretty silly idea anyway. As they set off home, Little Nose's immediate problem was to think of a good story for Father regarding the mysterious way his rock seat had disappeared into the ground. And, thank goodness, it was another year before he would have to think of a Crocus Day joke. Goodbye. <laughs>